uh, ATT tried to do a split. Yeah, there they we go. The, they split the dividend. Yeah, the, Sips was the oh, stock. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? Since you mentioned it, let's move on to ATT. I only was a segue morning. for you, partner. It did receive a pair of uh, Wall Street upgrades this morning, in fact. Yeah. And we'll get to those. Oh, uh, but last night, Jim did make a different kind of call on the company. Take a listen. Tonight, we're dusting off something I've rarely used in 16 years of mad money. And it's called the wall of shame. Honestly, I should put ATT's entire board of directors on the wall. But they still have the chance to claw back some of Stevenson's compensation. So let's see what they do. All right. Um, you are taking Stanky on the wall, too. I, I, that, that's the part I well, wonder about, because... You know, Jim, you, you could make, certainly make a very cogent argument you have for why Stevenson uh, perhaps deserves that. Right. But Stanky, Stanky I mean, he's Stanky making made bold shirt. moves in a short amount he, of time he that he believes are, are trying to position the company for a future that he sees. He made assurances about the dividend. You, you don't do that. You don't have to do it. You just don't. You, so you, you, that's what you have been very focused on. Well, because the people you who saw it own as a personal AT, affront. The people who own ATT, for the largest part, own it for the dividend. Yeah. Now we can go on. I've, I've actually spoken enough. I've re- I'm going to rest my case on this one because I'm ready to move on. But I do have a, a warning to people, David, who are watching the show, CEOs. Don't do that. Don't mm-hmm. assure your dividend to me. And then. Well, I think they've gotten that message. Well, um, good. Now, listen, when you, uh, to be fair, when you take a look at a 20 year on, on AT&T, I mean, that tells the overall story. There's. There's Holy a one week, hell. which it is down. How about you? Know, let's Twenty look. year is the better is a better view. It's singularly um, the worst company. Well, did not, you get that no, singular? Actually, no, that I was know a joke. That's, that was a singular. Oh, singular. Yes, singular. That was a SBC. joke. Okay. There's uh, how many years is that? Oh, there right. it is. Well, that's yeah. Hey, it just gets right back where it started percent. from. It's like that song. Yeah, I mean, GE looks a lot worse than that. Oh well, I had, I had a talk with Jeff. Yes, you did. Jeff, Jeff yes, you did. Jeff, Jeff, you know, there but were people we do on Twitter one... saying, why don't you call, call Jeff in? Um, do you know how hard it is to do this stuff? It is. Well, look, I'm, They've I'm given, a listen, 18, It's interesting what Diller's comments were. Actually, do we have that? I don't know. We can take a listen to what Diller, uh, sort of the way he viewed the deal. Yeah. Um, or maybe. The great escape for Time Warner. I mean, for AT&T. I mean, a, 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 a remarkable thing. You know, it's the thing. When you think about it, it's the power of monopoly. People say Discovery bought it. No. AT&T basically bought Discovery, AT&T shareholders. Right. But Discovery management, the scrappy Mr. Mr. Zaslov, gets to operate it. Uh, the scrappy Mr. Zaslov gets to operate it. That stock actually has had a rough week, as has our parent company, Comcast, as has Charter. Both of those down in part because they do believe there is going to be more flexible more competitive AT&T in the wireless slash connectivity industry. And that's that's kind of behind some of the notes this morning, Jim. You've got, uh, you know, UBS talking about, listen, none of them seem to believe that they're going to necessarily get to that 20 billion free cash flow target that they set out there at AT AT&T. That's good. But the analysts who are coming out positive today on the stock don't seem to care that much uh, for its part. Do we have that UBS? They they talk about they're just going to be more competitive in the wireless industry. That's what they kind of come back to. They say while cable continues to grow as a force in wireless and competition from Verizon and T-Mobile uh, will uh, ebb and flow, we believe AT&T will, prov- will um, improve its positioning relative to expectations in the 5G era as it accelerates the rollout of its C-band. Um, and, of course, they spend an enormous amount of money on that, on those airways. Over at uh, New Street, they say, yeah, we don't believe the guidance, but it doesn't matter. We don't have the company growing free cash flow at a mid-single digit range. Uh, right. And we don't have them generating $20 billion in free cash flow. We don't think it matters for two reasons. First, the market doesn't buy the guidance either. And second, even with a much lower free cash flow of, let's say, 15, they have plenty of cash to pay an $8.3 billion dividend while paying down debt. So we'll keep an eye on those shares, which, as you saw, of course, have been off this week. You, you've said your part. For I don't sure. need to say anymore. I, I, I think people know that what I stand for, is, hopefully, is understanding is that people who buy a stock in order to get fixed income... And, and, and have been reassured that it's fine. Right. And the reassurance was bogus. Yeah. Now, David, if you put up a, a five-year chart of T-Mobile, I'm surprising your guys in the control room, but if you take a look at a chart of Timus, uh, I think you're going to see what you want to see, which is this is the money if you would spend it on wireless rather than spend it on entertainment. 
T-Mobile's chart. Right. No, that's that, wireless spend. Uh, and don't forget, of course, it was AT&T that helped put T-Mobile in, in business in a sense. It was there when it happened. a much more competitive uh, and more robust ability to offer a right. more robust wireless service. But which would you rather be in? Transfer of spectrum and money to the company when, of course, their attempts to acquire the company were shut down by the regulators. And that's right. also part of the story for AT&T. They got shut down there when they did try to grow in wireless. Uh, and then they also had another year of review added on for when they tried to buy Time Warner right. to close the deal. David, you were there when they were cost. upping Time Warner. We were together at Delivering Alpha. Yeah. And uh, we were somewhat uh, aghast that they just came. But, you know, Jeff Bukas is what you want. Jeff Bukas was determined to get the best price for his shareholders, and, and he, he did. did. And he did. And it's a good, yeah, it's a good way to deal with AT&T. Michael right. White also did a great job for DirecTV. Yep. All that said, I, I, I probably disagree with I think the jury's still out on Stanky. You may have to take him down at some point. We'll see. All right, you won't. I took Strauss Zelnick down at 13, put him on the high teens, soon at 13. Yeah. I took um, the former CEO of Walmart down after he said, why don't you check your store in Route 22? Uh, you, you can come off the wall. You had, the, which was that, Mike? Who did you have up Lee. On? Oh, you had, you had uh, Lee Scott. He's a good man. Yeah. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.